Hey, this is the XDF. It's my favorite time of year, uh, the holiday season with the holiday CTFs. And uh, the first one where I get to make some content is the advent of code. Um, so advent of code 2023, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be doing the first challenge and it's going to be called trebuchet. Um, so there's a lot of uh, intro text here, uh, but most of it is about how we need to collect 50 stars over 25 days, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we get down to the end and basically what we're going to have is we're going to have a bunch of lines of input here. And these lines of input, uh, we need to use them to form a two digit number. So for each one, we're going to get the first digit and the last digit. Um, see, there's like an example, like with a lot of digits, we'll get the one and the five, and that'll make 15. Um, so we get the first digit, last digit, multiply the first one by 10, you know, et cetera. Um, and we just need to go over the lines and get all the two digit numbers, sum them together to get a result. In fact, I'm going to grab this while I'm right here so we can have example code to work with. And uh, let's go take a look. Um, before we do dive in, I will show, I wanted to quickly review, um, I have the script I use called Genday, um, and the whole point of it is just my, it's sort of my way of prepping. It makes a folder and it puts, pulls the input for me, etc. Um, I do have the AOC session stored, my session cookie from the advent of code stored in uh, an environment variable so I can get it. Um, I have, right now it sort of just forms the day by making it to make zero padding it, um, making sure it's between one and 25. Uh, and then unless I give it the word Rust, I'm going to be doing this in Python this year, I believe. Maybe some Rust, we'll see, but uh, Python. Uh, then it's going to make a directory, it's going to go into the directory, it's going to pull the input and input.txt, and then it's going to create this simple stub for me. So um, we can do that by sourcing it with gen day and then giving it a day. And you can see we're now down in day one. We've got a day one folder here, and we can close this. I'll take a quick look at the input. Um, nothing too surprising. Um, one thing to note here is we do have like even the second line, there's only one digit here. Um, so I did see in the example that'll end up being 66. No problem. Um, just need to be aware of that. Uh, we'll go ahead here and do an ex.txt and paste in these four lines so we can have something to work with. Uh, day one and uh, let's start to work on it. Um, I've already in my stub going to open the, the whatever I pass in as the argument and uh, read the lines into lines. That's fine. Um, there's a handful of ways we can do this. Um, so I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say sum equals zero, and then we'll just say four line in lines. Um, we could do this in a list comprehension, but it would get kind of messy. So, uh, so we're gonna say digits equals, and then this is what we need to come back to. Um, I'm gonna just set that blank for now. What we, what we wanna do is just get the digits from the line, and then we can do something like sum plus equals int uh, digits zero uh, times 10 plus int digits minus one. Oops. We're pulling the first and last digit, and uh, that's basically all we need. So we can come here and do, actually, let's call this part one. And we just need to do this, there we go. Uh, and that should work. Now we can figure out how to get rid of the digits. And there's a few ways we can do this. Um, the, the like brain dead simple way to do it is just to do a join on um, the C for C in, line if c dot is digit like that um oops we need dot there and so what we're going to do basically is we're just going to loop over each of the characters and only include it if it's a digit and we're going to join that back together into a string we don't even need to join that back into a string let's uh just leave it as a list um and that'd work fine uh, in fact we can test this let's do python day one example 142. That's what we, that was the answer. So that worked. Um, we could also do, let's see, we can do uh, equals, um, there's a filter. So we could do filter uh, string is digit. So basically we're saying filter the, the line with this function is digit. Only if it returns true do we include it. Um, what I don't know is this is going to create a generator object. And I don't know if we can reference it twice like this. Uh, let's try that and see if it works. It might fail. Yeah, it failed. Um, those are objects and also scriptable, but we can do, we can make this into a list and I believe this will work 142. That's right. Uh, we could also do this with regex, um, import, import re, and we could do something like, uh, ooh, digits equals re dot sub. And then all we need to do is say backslash capital D. So that means non digit characters with nothing online. And that will also give us 142. 
Um, so we can do any of those things. Um, I guess at this point we can go ahead and do our input.txt and we got an answer. Let's grab this and go over here. And hopefully it's the right answer. Not sure why it's taking a second here. All right, it worked. Um, so part two, I might pause this real quick and just give it a read. All right, so part two. Um, the only difference here now is that we have to take into account that there might be number words that should count as numbers. So if I see the number O-N-E, it should really I treat that as a one. Um, so in this first example here, two, one, nine, uh, it should be 29, not 11. I would treat it as 11 in the old one. Um, so I guess we should grab this uh, example. Come over here and give ourselves an ex2.txt. Ooh, dot exe, that's not uh, rename. It's a weird thing. That's a weird habit. Um, close that. Uh, and for part two, I think this. I think we're just going to do like a really simple replace. I'm sure there's a like way to do it with a translate. Um, I'm just not sure what it is. I think we're just going to do it down here. I don't see any point in trying to uh, do it in the same loop. We could save the number of iterations. We could loop less times, but I'm not sure it actually matters here. So we're just going to do it this way. Um, uh, digit trans equals, and now we're going to do, um, I, this is very brute forcey, but I think this is just the easiest way to do it. Um, we just need to set up ourselves a little table of, if I make these, all right, this is getting ugly. Let's see. I'm going to make, I'm being a little bit OCD. We're going to make these single quotes because I don't know, because it'd be easier to type, uh, two, comma three colon three comma four is four five five six six seven seven eight eight and nine nine okay so now, um, the thing we need to check, uh, there's two things I want to check here. First, does case matter? Um, and second, uh, is, there's no zero. They didn't give me zero in the, in here they didn't list zero as a digit, so I want to make sure I don't need to account for that. Uh, we'll do that with a quick some grep. Um, we'll do a grep minus i for case insensitive on the string one on input.txt. Um, there's lots of stuff there. Let's see, if we do... We put an O here, it'll give me just the match. And now I can do a sort uh, unique minus C and get a histogram. They're all lowercase one. Um, two looks good. Three looks good. I can just, just for example, I can show you if this was like four, um, we'll save that and we'll change it back. But if we come here and did four, now you see how we get the, we see one instance of four. So we change that back. We're good. Um, okay, so we don't have to worry about case. The other thing I wanted to check was does zero show up in here at all? Zero does not. Sweet. Okay, so we're good. So for each line, what are we going to do? We'll do four, um, I guess we'll call it like string int in uh, digit trans dot values and that'll give us so digit trans dot values will return a tuple so like it'll turn one and zero together so that'll unpack into the s and the i work nicely for us we can do line dot subs uh, dot replace s i i think that's all we need to do and then we can basically just do the same thing we did up above here and this will be part two and we might be done let's see if we do uh, Python day one on example two, oh, we have a problem here. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, um, in this one, what are we doing wrong here? String index out of range. Um, Let's see. I'm curious to know what that is. Let's see. So what's the best way to do that? We can do a um, try uh, accept and just put a breakpoint here. So let's see. If we get to this point, we should we should want to see what's going on. So um, oh, because we don't have uh, is there stuff in our example two that is not has no no real digits in it. Yeah, this one right here. Um, so oh, that's annoying. Um, 
All right, let's close you up for a second. I did mean values, thank you. Um, what are we getting here? Let's break point and see what we got. Um, rigid trans dot values. Uh, not values, items, items, items. And that silly mistake, let's get rid of that. I'm guessing we don't need this other breakpoint, but let's leave it for the moment. Uh, oops, quit. So I need to save here. And... Oh, am I am hitting something. What was our line that we're hitting it on? Um, eight worth three. Eight, two, three. Oh! Interesting. I wonder which one we're supposed to do here. It doesn't tell us what we're supposed to do here. Does it? 8, 2, 3. That would be 83. Oh, geez. Um, that is, a, that is a bit of a trick there, because we're supposed to take the 8, and then that no longer leaves a 2. Um, so we, we can't... If we replace the 2 here, we're going to get a wrong answer. I don't know why we're failing. Um, I would expect not... Uh, let me just see if I get a new one. Yeah, I did. Why did why did eight two three fail? Um, let's run this back. Uh, line line dot replace two two. Does that not work? Yeah, that worked. Why did that fail? Oh, because I'm not actually setting it. There we go. Line dot, there we go. That's going to be better. So I'm still going to fail. I'm going to get the wrong answer. We actually stumbled upon why we're going to get the wrong answer. So 211 is not the wrong answer. We need, we need 281. Um, but we can't just do that in that way. We have to actually... Um... Okay. I've been thinking about this. And I, this is tricky for our first day, right? Um, I've got to, I think I have an answer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the string 1 with the string 1, 1, like that. And what that effectively is going to do is it's going to say if I make if I messed up any other any other digits, it's going to fix that, right? So um, let's take let's go look at example two. Let's open this to the side. Um, so when I get this one, move down here. First thing I'm going to do is replace two with the string two 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 like this, and then later I'm going to replace eight with eight eight eight. And what this does is it effectively leaves, you know, that way I, the order I replace doesn't matter because it preserves the words around it. But I also, I still get my eight as the first thing. So then when I just get rid of the non-digits, I get rid of the non-digits. So um, there's probably like a slicker way to do this. Um, I'm going to run black on this because I'm getting kind of, uh, um, ah. Run black because it's getting kind of messy and I'd like to be able to see it. Uh, black. There we go. Okay, so now we just need to do three, three. Um, in fact, we could probably do this with a list um, rather than having to type it out. Uh, so we could do four and then items. Um, what if we do re.sub? And if we do regex, now we're going to look for... It's be tricky. Uh, let's see, can we, can we do this with this? We're going to look for S. We're going to replace S with. Oh no, that's, that's not going to work. Uh, that's, let's not do that. Um, let's just come back up here and finish this. Five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. All right, so now this replace should work fine. Our digits will sub. We don't we don't need that breakpoint, I don't think. But now if we come in here and we do Python day one on example. Ooh, I hit something. What is my line? Uh, new line. Oh, we don't need that. Um, let me just delete that from there. Oh. So what you get for messing with your example input while you're trying to solve? Uh, 281. See if we can grab that back over here. 281. Please. So I think we got it. That was that. You know, 
they did a nice job of making that challenging, but not too challenging. I guess I should actually get this, solve this before I get too cocky about it, but we did get it. Um, whew, that went on long for a day one video. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today. Hopefully this was fun and uh, you learned something and uh, talk to you tomorrow.